You are beautiful, aren't you? Yes, you are. Come on, then. Go on, then. Go on. I'll give you a ball in a bit. <laughs> Get off me. Listen, I've got to do a vlog. Go. Do one. Yes. Come on, then. Oh, my Lord. How do? Or... How do? Time for a bro. That's my new saying. It's not really. That's what my daughter and my missus are insisting I do. They keep popping in the room. Or if I come out of the shower and they're there on the landing, I'll do have a brew. It's not good, guys. Not a good look. Anyway, today's vlog. <sighs> the untouchable screw bully. I'll talk about untouchable in a minute. Let's talk about what a screw is. A lot of new people watching the channel, right? Screw, slang term for a prison officer. Prison officer, guard, warder. Used to be called warders. Screw, the best I can describe it, no doubt loads of people are going to correct me on this, comes from the fact that if I am to make this a modern term prisoners used to be on something similar to a treadmill which powered a shaft which in turn powered other things yeah and the prison officers could make it harder to operate by turning the screw there or thereabouts untouchable screw bully this lad was a bully no questions untouchable uh, probably some of the other bullies thought so too, but this guy definitely thought he was. So what is untouchable? Nobody should be untouchable. Um, anyone in care, looking after kids, care homes, prisons. Yeah. People who are bullies, whether that's bullying staff or prisoners, become untouchable when you have shite management, weak, poor management. I think historically the prison service, which was a brutal service, that's not everyone in it who's brutal, but it was brutal, beatings, you know, using uh, racial slurs and the like, all documented, plenty of people have come out, given interviews, these articles everywhere, it was brutal time back in the day, for me nobody is above the law, so untouchable. In my time, few investigations. Here's the thing. The bad bullies, the guy I'm talking about, he weren't liked. People didn't like him. People didn't like working with him. These people usually has an easy life as a prison officer because they don't get challenged. You know, I'm stood there. Governor comes up, wants someone to go on a prison escort. Or they've got bully boy, Mr. Untouchable. No percentage, he's not going to do it. He's going to game grief. So he'll ask me, knowing full well I'll do it, and I used to. So, from that point of view, they get an easy life as officers. Although they're not liked. And they pick their audiences. This guy definitely picked his audience. You know, if he thought he could get away with something, he would. Working with people like myself, he wouldn't. I never particularly worked with him. I come across him, I didn't like him. The first time I met him, I was on training. I was put on A-wing with two other lads, yeah? So we had, we had our uniform at that point. A-wing is a wing, it has an inner and an outer. So in the middle is a sterile area where prisoners can't get. So prisoners used to come on the wing, on the inner. At dinner time, for instance, coming back from work, you would have sterile gates open in the middle. So those that were on the outer could go through, yeah? So we put on A-wing, we had no keys. We were put in a sterile area on the ones landing, there's four landings, one, two, three, four. Just outside the office. The office staff are having tea and toast, I have no problem with that. Uh, I've told you we had no keys. Just abuse. Mr. Bully Boy, can't remember the exact terms, etc. but he was referring to us as canuts, if you know what I mean, using the C word. Tosses, all, all name and manner. He's found a ball. You're amazing, you. All, all manner of words. There was two people with him, right, who were alcoholics. 
yeah whether they were alcoholics because they're in the wrong job and it's a stressful job no doubt whether they were alcoholics because of the drinking culture or what i don't know might have been alcoholics how i look at things now because they had particularly nasty childhoods anyhow there's them three abuse the comments bear in mind when you recruits not pleasant they left us there for two hours they came out of the office at some point and went onto the wing they left us stood in a sterile area for two hours yeah no keys prisoners out on the wing prisoners were coming up you're right boss yeah what are you doing there we have no keys are you new yeah why have they left you there you tell me plenty of interactions with the prisoners that's all we had the senior officer who is the wing manager about 10 minutes before we were due to leave the wing, came over, let us out, you know. Perhaps realising that, yeah, not the best idea, leaving new recruits locked in a sterile and not showing them anything. Uh, I do believe he got a bollocking for how we were treated on that wing. So let's get back to the bully boy, Mr Untouchable. I've already told you I worked on the prison healthcare. Before I went on there, I did a lot of overtime shifts to acquaint myself. One of these shifts... I'm on there, there is a constant watch. A constant watch is exactly that. It's a gated cell, it's a cell with a gate, not a cell door. Perspex on that gate, somebody sat 24 hours a day, yeah? You can get rotated, but basically constant means somebody has to be there all the time. Prison service orders, prison service instructions, somebody has to be there. If you need to go to the toilet, you ask someone to come and sit there. Yeah, 24 hours. Disciplinary action, you know, you leave a constant watch or whatever, you can be disciplined. So there's an incident on the healthcare, I'm involved, it was a restraint. I didn't know the lad. Um, he had issues around his mental health, mental illness. He'd come out onto the landing, he'd kicked off, so we ended up restraining him. On the healthcare, well, if we go to normal wings again to explain you, if someone's restrained, they will go to the segregation unit to solitary, yeah? Might be for a short period, a cooling down period, a couple of hours, then they'd be back on the wing. On the healthcare, these prisoners are on the healthcare for a reason, either physically or mentally unwell. So they stay on there. So he was restrained back into his cell, yeah? Very violent individual, not necessarily directing that violence at us, but I have talked before, people who are mentally unwell, fetch it, come on then. Bad mental illness, they have superhuman strength, whether it's adrenaline or whatever, I do not know. But probably a good 20 minutes, uh, a good sweat on, trying to get him back in his cell. Anyway, we got him back in his cell. Um, one of the staff was interacting at the door, you know, um, trying to de-escalate, calm him down, ask him when he wanted a brew and the like. Come on then, Stevie, ask him where they wanted a brew and the like. That's how it works. I then went in the office. So there's one of my future managers in there, Miss Bradbury. So Miss Bradbury says to me, Mr. Samworth, will you come with me into the gated cell? Hello. She's a pretty chick, isn't she, Steve? She's way out of your league, mate. Yeah, you come with me. We went in the gated cell. The lad in there um, was Mytherson. Yeah? Or had been. He's very quiet at this time. So Mytherson, I don't know whether it's a Yorkshire word, just an English word. People might not understand. Mytherson means... Can I have, can I have, can I have, can I have, give me, give me, give me, that sort of thing. That's Mytherson. That's what he was. He wasn't dangerous. Um, but like I say, he was in the constant watch cell for a good reason. He'd had a good go at taking his own life. This lad had had a beating, no doubt about it. There were no cameras on the healthcare at that time. Definitely had a beating. He'd been hit around the face. he got black eye, a few other swellings. It turns out that Mr. Bully Boy, Mr. Untouchable, who was on a constant watch, while the incident was going on, yeah, has disappeared. You know, the staff came back to the office, constant watch, nobody there. The lad's cowering in a corner, crying, and he's had a beating. 
What happened about that? First of all, I did a load of paperwork. Incident report, there's a 213, the nurse fills in a medical report showing the facial injuries, um, security report and the like. She asked the healthcare manager, Miss Bradbury, to come up to the unit, yeah? She says to the healthcare manager, constant watch, he's disappeared while there's an incident, left it unmanned, we found this lad like this. What do you want me to do about it? This is a guy who works for the health authority, he don't work for the prison. What do you want me to do about it? She says, I want to know what's happened, where this guy's gone, and I want it investigating. So they got a prison governor up, explained the same situation. Prison governor asked who the officer were. You know, Officer Bully, Mr. Untouchable. Nothing happened, yeah? He didn't get investigated. That lad could have been disciplined. He left the constant watch, didn't tell anyone why. He wasn't even questioned, yeah? Too much trouble. That's what happens. The people who raise concerns or the like are troublesome. They're mithersome. People don't want to deal with it. A lot of governors I met didn't want to deal with incidents like that. So, later on, I'm now working on healthcare. We had a lad on there. He wasn't usual healthcare sort. I knew him well. Short, stocky. Never judge a book by its cover. What a tough little cookie this were. I got on well with him though. He didn't cause trouble in prison. Asked him why he was on healthcare. Officer Bully, he's had some confrontation with him. Again, he's called him the C word a couple of three times. The lad said, why are you being like that? The lad's gone behind his door. It was dinner time, just before they served the meals. The Officer Bully and Touchables come to his door, banged him one in the face, yeah? Uh, he's hit him back by his own admission. Uh, he's been jumped on and taken to the segregation unit. That's solitary. When he's in there, he's mad. You know, this officer's come and punched him for no reason. He said he was gonna kill himself, so that's why he's on healthcare now. Segregation, have got rid of him. Here's the issue. The lad said, Mr. Samuel, if I hit him, yeah, I've been placed on report. So that means he's got to appear in front of a governor. He says, he said, I bit him. Mr. Samuel, I've never bit anyone in my life in a fight. I punched him in the face. I got a good in him, Mr. Samworth, before they got on me. I don't mind that, okay. So I told the lad, when he goes in front of a governor, tell it how it is, yeah? You didn't bite him. He's not your tooth out, because he had. You suspect his hand is where he's not your tooth out. Tell him you hit him, which he did. He told the governor that. The governor gave him a caution, the governor, who was a good governor, couldn't do anything else. The lad said he hit an officer, he'd assaulted him. So he had to get a caution. However, the governor also knew the bully boy, Mr. Untouchable, so he, I guess, believed the lad. And Mr. Untouchable. Yeah, did a lot of overtime, this lad. For me, if you're working overtime in the prison, you're put somewhere you know, you're getting paid a decent rate of pay. You do what you're asked to do. So he's on the CAT A unit. Again, if you're not familiar with prisons, CAT A unit at Strange Ways, the highest risk prisoners. Sums it up nicely. The prisoners at Strange Ways were this way, Stevie, what you called on a book. Yeah, it means they had a little book. Whatever they went, that little book went with them. And that book had a number, one, two, three, etc. On the CAT A unit on nights, you had to fill these books in, and on day, but on nights, fill these books in within the hour. So if you checked on someone at two o'clock, you'd write, you know, in cell, two o'clock. Yeah, 2 a.m. You would then have to check, so it'd be 2.59, 58, 57, not three o'clock, it's got to be within the hour. You might have 10 books. You would also have e-listers. They're people who are at risk of escape. Yeah, in prison, those people are dressed in blue, and yellow stripes. They have blue and yellow pajamas on at night. They don't have actual clothing in their cell. Their risk of escape. They're on a book. You have to locate them as well. Two o'clock, 2.59 in cell. This lad, Mr. Untouchable on the Cat A unit, didn't do that. He sat in the office all night. 
filling in the books but not checking them. He got caught out. I don't know who caught him out. Um, the following night, two senior officers there give him a bollocking. That's disciplinary action, that. He, he's saying he has checked on someone and he hasn't. There's two things you do in prison, yeah? You always, always, always check on people, yeah? In fact, that, that's it, just check on people. Entering a cell, check. If you've got people on suicide self-half documents, check them. If they're on a book, check them. You know, that's what your job is, checking on prisoners. He didn't, he got a bollocking. He didn't like that, so guess what he did? He's on the Cat A unit again, he's doing a set of nights. Did he check on him? We don't know, do we? Because he turned the cameras off. By this time, all the wings in the jail are camered up. In the office, there's recording equipment, yeah? You can record stuff, you can record incidents. You can go back 24 hours. This lad, Mr. Untouchable, has turned the cameras off on the highest secure most risky prisoners unit in strange ways, yeah? I don't know whether that got him finished or that was the start of his demise, but Mr. Untouchable became or was got rid of, and rightly so. So challenging behaviour. I found myself incidents that happened in strange ways that I was involved in, uh, investigations and the like. The people who start the investigations, like you complain about someone's behaviour, you're the problem. Yeah, people don't want to deal with it. There's lots of people who've been at prison service headquarters, you know, up as high as you're going to get to the MPs, who've been at establishments, prisons, where awful things have happened on their watch and they've not been investigated. The prison service is poor at doing investigations, yeah? They don't want to put the prison service in disrepute, um, you know, they don't want people causing problems, turn the blind eye. Lots of people I work with used to challenge the bullies and the bad officers. That doesn't mean necessarily it's going to investigation. Pull them over in the office. I see you do that again, I'll fill you in, that sort of thing. I've seen that. I've seen officers who were bullies pinned up against the wall. You could say the guy that's pinning them, for me, justified. Yeah? So I'm going to leave it there. The most untouchable screw bully, who finally, finally got finished. Couple of interviews this weekend. Tony Wilson from Farmworth, hopefully finishing his life story. And Holly, ex-prison governor I used to work with. I'm going to put some tough questions to her. Thanks for all the continued support. Thanks to everyone. Thanks for coming. I'll see they Parting shot though, as always. He is a stunning boy. Beautiful, aren't you? Yes, you are.